Hello everyone, my name is Cameron Stevens and I'm a local real estate agent here in Los Angeles. Some of you may know that recently my fiance and I purchased our first home in the middle of a pandemic. I wanted to make a video talking about what I did, why I did it, what our long-term plans are, and most importantly, if I'm completely crazy to have purchased a house all while COVID-19 is happening. Wow, where to begin? Uh, maybe a good place to start is by saying this. It's my full-time job to help people buy and sell homes. I've been through this process with my clients over and over and over again. So you would think that it would be pretty straightforward and not the least bit stressful, right? Wrong. Purchasing a home is an emotional roller coaster from start to finish. I still had to rush signatures on documents, worry about documents being overnighted and getting to escrow on time, shopping for insurance, negotiating credits for repairs, and being completely stressed out signing loan documents early in the morning to, fingers crossed, try to close before the weekend. Also, I too went through the same ups and downs of loving the house when I first saw it, then negotiating against multiple offers, then noticing all the little flaws during the inspection period and coming to think, this is a terrible house. Don't buy it. It's, it's not worth the money. Everything's too expensive and the house is falling down. All the way to realizing things aren't as bad as they seem and a little work can go a long way and your first home is never your dream home and this is the start of a long-term journey to finally closing on the property and being elated to making it over the hump. Oh, and there's a patio and a pool. I have learned that cocktails do indeed taste better on a hot day when you are partially submerged in water. All jokes aside, that's a long-winded way of saying the same thing that I advise all my clients. This process is tough, but worth it. Get yourself a good agent. Now, for those curious about what we actually bought, Lindsay and I purchased a 1956 Palmer and Chrysler mid-century home in the North Hills West neighborhood. It's tucked right in between Northridge and Granada Hills. Palmer and Chrysler were mid-century architects that built a lot of homes in the valley in the post-war period, and they are known for their triangular windows, and of course, as mid-century is, their open floor plans with tons of light and indoor-outdoor living. William Kreisel actually went on to make most of his career building in Palm Springs. And actually, most people know him from his work out there, specifically from his butterfly-style roof lines, which are super cool. I really love mid-century architecture. I think it's the perfect way to experience Southern California. So. Of course, we wanted to find an architecturally sound gem that we could restore to its former glory. It's worth noting that this house is part of a longer term strategy that Lindsay and I will be working together on. We plan to purchase a new home somewhere between every two to five years and live in it while we renovate it. The minimum two years is the time period required to have a property be your primary residence so you can qualify for the capital gains tax exemption up to $250,000 for a single person and $500,000 for a married couple. That means we can take the profits from the first house tax-free and roll it into the second, do that again, roll it into the third, and so on and so forth until we've reached our true dream house territory. I've watched a very wide variety of people invest in real estate in my career, and though there are many ways to do it, this is one of the ways that I think people can really maximize the investment payoff specifically of their primary residence. Now, I think the major differentiation here is to note that we are renovating these homes, specifically with architectural preservation in mind and not flipping them. See, flippers are looking for the quick profit in a short period of time. Now, not all flippers do this, but most of them invest in very cheap materials and focus only on really trendy aesthetics, not taking the time to really think about how these updates will affect someone living in the house because they don't have to live in it. In my experience, what we call seller renovated homes always sell for more money because these are people who are making the upgrades for them, not for quick profit. This always means higher quality and more well thought up upgrades and thus commands a higher price. Plus buyers tend to feel better when someone actually cares 
like we do about a home. Of course, this house has a lot of work that needs to be done to it, and we've budgeted about $60,000 over the course of the time that we own the house to do this work. A great aspect of living in a house while we renovate it is that we don't need all the money up front. We can slowly invest as we earn more and save for the work. Plus, we're gonna be doing a lot of the work ourselves. I mean, I've already painted two rooms while Lindsay's done plumbing work and electrical outlet replacements, and to her credit, lots of cleanup. But that still begs the question, why now? And why in the middle of a pandemic? Well, there are two major driving forces that I see right now, and these are not unique to me. Rather, I think they are driving the larger market as a whole, and we're certainly not immune to them. We're part of that larger market. The first is monetary. The second is changing how we live. Let's start with the financials first. I don't know how to say this other than interest rates are at historic lows and money is dirt cheap. Interest rates on conforming loans are easily dropping below 3% and well-qualified buyers are getting a mid 2% loans. Even people in the jumbo loan category or people that are putting less than 20% down are getting mortgage rates in the low 3%. Not only that, the Fed has stated they plan to keep interest rates low well into 2021. So money is easily accessible. I remember looking at a home loan when, you know, a couple years ago and it was at the mid 4%. I mean, even people that looked as early as late last year and the beginning of this year saw mid 3% rates. This translates to potentially hundreds of dollars less on a mortgage payment from that time period. We now have a mortgage payment slightly higher than the place we were renting and we get an extra bedroom an extra bathroom, double the space, and a pool. Plus, we're no longer throwing away money each month on rent, and we are building up equity in an asset that we own, which is a huge step towards a solid financial future. Okay, money aside, there are just as important, if not more important, personal changes that are driving this move for us and many, many other people in the market. Our old place that we thought was a super cool artist space, suddenly felt like a prison with no outdoor space when the pandemic happened. Being able to walk to things was suddenly irrelevant. Being at home all the time meant space was a concern, and Lindsay and I certainly had a rough adjustment period to both working at home full-time in the same space. We craved something quieter, a place with tree-lined streets for our dog. We wanted space, and we were willing to live a little farther outside of the city to get that. I mean, most companies will not be returning to the office well until 2021, and even then we will see an increase in work from home either permanently or flexibly. Commute times will be significantly reduced, potentially for a very long time, which is a good thing for mental well-being, as well as the ability to live a little farther from the city. All of my fears about moving to what some people might consider a suburb of Los Angeles were definitely unfounded. The food is excellent. It's on par with most other areas of Los Angeles and friends will still come visit without hesitation, though I'm sure the pool helps. It's just as vibrant and interesting as the heart of the city, except I can see stars at night and there aren't meth addicts outside my front door. I also think that there is an inevitable trend in the growth of the suburbs. I mean, if people are no longer required to live so close to the city, it would make sense that they move further away if they can have more space for the same price. And couple that with the fact that many people will want larger houses with one, if not multiple offices, if your price point hasn't changed, you got no choice but to seek that living situation a little farther from the city. All of these forces and stories are similar to the reasons every single person I've helped purchase a home during the pandemic have stated. I have to be at home more. I don't need to be as close to the city. I'd like some more peace, quiet, and space. On a little personal note, want to know how many houses we looked at before choosing one? Five. Now, you could make the argument that I see hundreds and hundreds of homes for my work, and you would be right, but I still firmly believe the advice I always give my clients. If a home makes your heart sing, don't overthink it. Go for it. 
We did, and though it has been a crazy amount of work, maybe even a little bit more than we signed up for, it is definitely worth it. This year is quickly coming to an end. I don't have to tell you that I believe that this is an excellent time to buy a home. I just did it myself. So are you looking to purchase your first home in Los Angeles? Hey, maybe you know someone who is. I would love to help guide them through this process and make sure they land the perfect home for them.